Hi, I'm Harvey Webster, and welcome to another edition of Creature Features. Now today, we're talking all things whistle pig. That is woodchuck. That is groundhog. What are these various names? Well, they're all common names for the same animal. And that animal has a scientific name, Marmota monax. And this actually is a great illustration of why it's important to have a scientific name. Marmota monax is a universally recognized name, Latinized, binomial nomenclature, two parts to the name, so that no matter where you are in the world, you'll know when you're talking Marmota monax, you're talking this very, very large member of the squirrel family, very common here in the state of Ohio. Now, oftentimes we know them as groundhogs because there's actually an entire day that relates to this animal. Groundhog's Day, February 2nd, Candlemas. They've got a very interesting natural history. They are a member of the squirrel family, and though they live underground, they are capable of climbing trees. It's oftentimes very interesting to see a groundhog up in a tree. But they are well adapted for an underground life. They have a coarse, bristly-like fur that tends to shed dirt. So as they're digging with their paws underground, their fur coat doesn't get all dirty. They have valvular nostrils and valvular ears. That just means they can close their nose and close their ears while they're digging so they don't get any dirt in there. And so they're able to excavate these massive underground networks of tunnels and dens that can cover maybe a quarter acre in extent. So this is where they live year round, but in the winter time, what they're renowned for is after a fall plumping up and adding lots of pounds to their body, they go into one of the chambers underground, they plug it off with vegetation, and they go into a profound sleep, a hibernating sleep, where they allow their body temperature to drop and actually flirt with the same temperature of the soil around them. And they will sleep basically all winter long. They do this because there is no food available to them in the wintertime. So by hibernating, they actually protect themselves. Last cool thing about them is they're rodents. So when we think about rodents, we think mice and rats and squirrels. But all rodents have something in common. If you looked in their mouth, they have two teeth up here, two big incisor teeth, and two big incisor teeth there. So two pair of incisor teeth. And these incisor teeth have a very hard forward component called enamel, but the back of the tooth is made of dentin. These same things we find in our teeth. But what happens is these guys start gnawing, the back of the tooth wears down faster than the front, and it always preserves this really sharp chisel edge to the teeth. It's like a self-sharpening system, so their teeth never get dull. The trouble is, is if they're doing all that gnawing in their teeth, they're wearing down pretty soon, they wouldn't have any teeth at all. So how do they get around that? Their teeth, their incisor teeth, are always growing. And they're growing in at the same rate that the groundhog, woodchuck, whistle pig, is gnawing on things, so they always appear to be the same size. So, February 2nd, regardless of the weather, just remember the whistle pig, woodchuck, the groundhog, Marmota monax, this fascinating member of the squirrel family that you find right here in the state of Ohio. This has been another edition of Creature Features. I'm Harvey Webster.